Nathan Souter produced his best ever list day figures of 6 for 62 as Middlesex began their Royal London One Day Cup campaign with a very impressive 38 run win over Essex in Chelmsford. Put in, the visitors lost Paul Sterling for a dozen in the fourth over. Robbie White behind the stunts having some early joy against his own county while out on loan. John Simpson was soon into his stride with this six. Before he also fell for 27, White holding on again, this time off Peter Siddle. The left-handers David Milan and Owen Morgan both looked in fine fettle as they found the boundary frequently in adding 35 for the third wicket. Only to lose Morgan for 20, White again having something to cheer about as Middlesex fell to 107 for three in the 18th over. Milan kept his composure and completed his 50 off 53 balls, six fours included in that. Stevie Eskenazi was the next to go for 28, and yes, you guessed it, White had a say in the dismissal once again. Milan did his very best to try to kick on in the middle overs as he appeared to be heading to his 11th list 800. Only to be undone at the non-striker's end to head back to the pavilion, doubtless feeling robbed, having made 95. Nick Gubbins had added 57 runs for the fifth wicket with Milan, Gubbins dominating that as he now reached his own half century of his 48th delivery. He fell for 56, White now adding a stumping to his day's work. Middlesex on 293 for six with eight overs remaining. And George Scott made the most of those. The 23 year old was playing in only his third list A game and was making the most of his opportunity with some really clean hitting. His fifth six saw him race to a 50 off only 22 balls. A brilliant attack towards the end of the innings to give his side the momentum heading into the break. He was out for a superb 63. Siddle the man to remove him. Middlesex ending fairly pleased no doubt with a total after 50 overs of 366 for eight. Tim Murta can add a knight of the realm to the list of his victims now as he had Sir Alistair Cook taken behind for 16 in the 8th over of the Essex reply. But Varun Chopra was more of a nuisance. This his second maximum, taking him to a 56 ball 50. He was very well backed up by Tom Wesley, who was also raising his bat after clearing the rope off Milan, the 43rd delivery the batsman had faced. These two were in danger of making light work of the target, Wesley going big again off Milan. Chopra, meanwhile, eased to his 100, one which had occupied 98 balls. The second wicket partnership had moved on to 158. So this wicket, Souter taking a return catch to remove Wesley for 77, was absolutely crucial. Essex left to find 160 runs from the last 20 overs. Souter was now in the thick of things and he had Dan Lawrence held by Eskenazi for six. Essex now on 219 for three. The target had been reduced to 111 off 12 when Toby Rowland Jones grabbed the vital wicket of Chopra, held by Morgan for 127. Then, five balls later, Roland Jones saw off Ravi Vapara for 20. Middlesex now on top with their hosts on 261 for five, 106 still needed from 11 overs. That became 65 off six, with six men out, the latest being white, as Souter struck for a third time. The leg spinner had only come into the attack in the 26th over, but he proved to be the match winner after Sterling had run out Simon Harmer. Souter had Siddle stumped by Simpson for his best ever list eight figures, which then became a fifer as he trapped Ryan Tenderscarter in front to seal the victory. Riley was left to the sensational Souter to wrap up proceedings all by himself to conclude a superb match altering spell of bowling. He ended with six for 62 as Essex were all out for 328 to give Middlesex victory by 38 runs ahead of their next contest at Lords against Gloucestershire on Sunday.